Hey Legionnaires, Omegon Edge here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the new oil paints from AK Interactive. And we're going to be testing out these paints on the new Van Saar Gang from Games Workshop's Necromunda. Let's get started. <laughs> So we're finally here, the long awaited review of AK Interactive's oil paint line. AK Interactive were kind enough to send me a sample of their new and improved branded paints, as well as some of their latest colours in this new primary and secondary set. Now I believe AK have had their oil paints for quite a number of years now, however when speaking to people from the wider painting community, these paints weren't really used outside of weathering. Now one of the reasons for that is actually before Covid, oil paints weren't all that popular for full painting miniatures, at least in wargaming. And the other reason was the minimal selection of useful colours and information on the tube. And this actually brings me to my first point. The tubes have undergone quite a change and the biggest benefit is the addition of the opacity indicator on the front of the tube. This is something that you'll find on most fine art paint tubes but this information it was universally missing from both the AK's acrylics line and the oil paint line until now. As a result it actually meant that you weren't really sure what you were going to get in the tube and so most people stuck to other brands. Now off the bat, I'll say that the paints aren't bad. I would compare them to that of Winsor Newton student line, but they dry a bit faster when thinned. But you know what, rather than just kind of like telling you, let's actually get to mix the colors on the palette and see what they can do. Now it's actually important to talk about the colors in the set themselves. The set comes with cyan, which is actually much more of a cerulean blue for those of you who are familiar with uh, fine art painting, magenta and a warm yellow. And also we have an orange, purple and green. So definitely what you'd expect in a primary color set. By going for a cerulean blue or cyan and a magenta, this actually allows us to create a wider variety of colors out of these mixtures than if we'd gone with a red and a blue darker blue because uh, the colors would be more vibrant so by having these colors in the set it's actually really useful now out of the six colors included in the pack four of them are new which is really helpful because the purple especially is something i really wanted to try i spent about half an hour mixing the colors together on my palettes just to see what i could make and to get a sense of how the paints felt to use and how potent they were. Now understanding the opacity of the colours is important here because it helped me to get an understanding of the results I was seeing in front of me. I also added snow white and a neutral grey as well as a ivory black which didn't come in the set but I had those spare just to see if I could experiment and see if there was anything cool for a scheme for my own Vansar. For the purpose of this video, I won't be using colours except the ones you see on the palette now. I wanted to see how far I could push the set. The consistency of the paint really felt nice and that's generally how I feel about the paints across the board. And I actually, for your information, have almost every colour from the old line and even some of which have now been discontinued. The issues I had back then when I was using the earlier versions of these sets from Absalong was that I wasn't actually using thinner in my paintings and as a result, uh, whilst it was easier to paint with, the oil paint wasn't really giving me the results I wanted. And uh, now that I've kind of grown, I've understood, I understand how to use the medium in a much better light, uh, using thinner with the Absalong oil paints has much better results, you would have guessed, thin your paint. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is that they work really well and um, each paint, each uh, different brand has its own kind of rules that you need to kind of adhere to. Um, and uh, just playing around with different colours and getting used to how the colours feel on your palette is really important. Now I'll be honest peeps, like before, when I was actually asking about these paints in a more of the oil painting community, I always heard of quite negative reviews. And um, after using them, I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't really know why there was so much negative fuss about it. But I guess I'll let you guys be the, the judge. So for the purpose of this video again, I'll just be using this Vansar model of more of a kind of like showcase to show you what the paints can do or how I got on with them and my thoughts and my feelings about them. Let's get started with the proper tutorial and we'll go from there. 
So the scheme I wanted for this marine was basically something very dark and uh, green. I wanted a slight tinge of green in my mixtures. So what I've done is I've mixed together a bit of the, the, the cyan, um, a little bit of the green to cool it even further. And then I've added some black to desaturate it just a tiny bit before adding a lot of ball of white and just bringing it to this kind of like cold blue highlight so everything is pretty much the same as what you would expect from painting a miniature with a shadows midtones and highlights um, and uh, basically I just wanted to experiment so at this point I'd already thinned my paint with about two parts paint to one point thinner and um, just started applying that all over the model using the prime glaze to, to get the surface ready for some paint and then adding to it um, I've actually been recently now um, experimenting with even less thinner just to see how much I can get away with just so that I can have stronger um, applications as I apply that onto the model and just get a stronger sense of color so at the moment though I'm just looking around the model just deciding on where I want to place my highlights and just seeing how much leverage I can get from the the, the paint I'm applying onto so here I'm using my Winsor Newton uh, dry brush, which is a size zero and a size zero or double zero um, round brush just to apply the paint on. And then I'm slowly blending away those strokes and just softening the transitions and trying to push the paint around, remove the excess and uh, spread it into areas where I need it to be. And this is what will allow me to layer on top of it. Now, if you're familiar with my other videos, you'll understand that first we apply our prime glaze onto the miniature, and then we start applying our paint into those areas that we need it. And then we use a dry brush to spread it around. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing here, trying to build those volumes. So I've got my primary light, my secondary light where the midtone comes into, and then the bounce reflection and the Terminator. I'm just applying that, just trying to get the direction in. Now, I think starting from a dark base, uh, it actually makes it a bit tricky to see exactly where those um, where the blue is, but having that little white area as well just helps you create that contrast and the value change. Um, at smaller miniatures, contrast matters more because you are trying to bring attention out. Uh, but the larger miniature you get, the less contrast you'll necessarily, you might necessarily need. Um, I think for 75 millimeter scale, it gets a bit different, but definitely from smaller scale, 28 mil to busts, um, the, the change in painting style is more drastic. And um, of course, if you're interested, be sure to check out the Patreon where I kind of go over the stuff we're actually building towards painting a bust over there with the Fundamental series. So hopefully, if you're already following, thanks for the support. And if you're not, just book free. It's completely free to check um, and to follow alone on the progress. And yeah, for those of you who want to support the channel more, um, there is a paid, paid tier too, just to help out the videos on YouTube and just to uh, help me continue creating. So after this point, I'm kind of pretty happy with the chest area at this point. Um, I'm letting it settle and I just start moving on to the helmet. You can see that I've added um, a very bright dot and that's basically where the main source light with the highlight is going to be. I'm going to be adding in different like, sections, um, blending it where it needs to be blended. Just trying to do this mostly with that straight brush before moving on to my dry brush to kind of spread it around a bit more. Um, and this just softens that, again, softens that transition. Notice how I'm not going over the entire surface. I'm really just sticking to the edges. And you can see the, the more I dry brush, the more I diffuse the paint and the softer that the strength, the more it kind of like takes away the strength of the paint. So at this point, I was finding it really, like the paint to be really effective. Um, the color, I was really happy with the colors I'd got, uh, just kind of like dark blue and this dark blue shade. And um, I was actually quite impressed with just how much of the pigment stayed behind after I'd applied the paint. Now you can see I'm working in a very small area. I'm not using a lot of paint here. I'm just using a tiny paint and I'm also using a, a wet palette just so I have more understanding um, of where the paint is. But at this point you can see 
where it, it's actually starting to build up towards and I'm not, not losing the strength. Now, artist grade paints, and again, these are not artist grade paints, um, are known for having a lot more pigment. Uh, and I think if you can't afford to upgrade to artist grade, that's fine. Um, I think these paints actually do a pretty good job of being acting like a kind of middle ground between artist grade and student grade. They're just, again, I say they're like just the same level, if not slightly better than student grade, but considerably cheaper than what you might pay for from an artist grade paint. So uh, as a result, when they dry in this case, using the Sansador uh, allows the paint to dry a lot more matte, which gives us a much nicer finish. Um, now blue paints, blue pigments, I guess this is like a cerulean blue. Um, it does dry quite satin um, and glossy in some places. Um, some paints, some of the oil paints dry a bit more glossy, um, especially some of their like washes or their browns dry very glossy. But this blue, again, adding in the Sansador just allows it to dry a lot more matte and gives us that, us that nicer finish. But you can also go in again afterwards with um, a, a matte varnish just to bring that back to where you need it to be. In general, I found the paint to be quite nice, easy to work with, easy to understand. Um, I did find myself having to be even more gentle with it though, because there is less pigment than the artist grade paints that I'm used to. You just have to understand when to stop a bit sooner. You kind of can't force your way around the mod. You can't like dry brush it as much you won't be able to get away with as much just because it doesn't have as much pigment but it just teaches you to have a bit more restraint than you would with an artist grade because there's only so much it can actually do A lot of the time when I was painting the model, I was still thinking about and planning it out in my head of what each part of the materials would be. Here you can see me just like starting to work on not the chest armor, but this uh, kind of like metallic areas just underneath the chest plate, the breastplate, um, trying to decide what these areas were. In some cases, I actually looked at some references um, from the way GW had actually painted it just to get a sense of what these things are supposed to be when it's um, primed in black actually it all kind of blends together so one advice I would give is to start with a xenophore and then blend up or paint on your oils after that point um, I was starting for black mainly because I'm lazy it's happened a few times <laughs> where I've um, I should be painting from grey but um, I just want to get into it, get stuck in. And uh, she's starting from a black base means that our colours will be slightly darker, which helps, I guess, in this case with the grim, grim dark star that I've been going for. Um, at this part, I've, I've started to add in my shadows, all my darks, into the areas where they need to be. And the nice thing about working in oil paints is you, you can take your time and you can actually just mark out all the areas you want to work on, start working in slowly. You can place on your lights, you can place on your midtones, then you can place in your shadows and you just slowly start blending those areas together and there's no rush. You're actually getting a lot of the model done and it doesn't take a lot of sittings um, to finish things. Now, I could spend a good like 20 hours on this model if I really wanted to. Um, but again, this isn't a display model, it's more of a showcase, just to quickly show you what the paints can do. So I spent a considerable less time amount, probably about two hours on this model to get it to the point where I needed it to be. And um, I only really did a couple of layers on this model as well. So I found that actually working that way, I still got the results I was after, even if I didn't do um, as many layers as I needed to. And the paint actually just allows you to do that. Um, it was slow drying on the palette, but dried quite quickly when it actually hit the model and I kind of removed some of the ex excess. So it just allowed me to really do some of these marks. And you can see now I'm, I'm edge highlighting in places. I'm getting 
those dots in I'm doing all the marks I kind of need to be doing um, just to help it draw it along bring it along and help the paint to kind of settle where I need it to So at this point I start working on the leg and I'm using the prime glaze with the dark brown, dark grey colour that I've mixed I've made um, on my palette and I'm slowly just adding just a little bit of a volume here to bring up the material. So this is going to be very matte material because it's clothing um, rather than the kind of shiny material that we have on his armour. So um, I'm still trying to keep this quite dark at this point. But I will be layering up to slightly brighter. Now there's two ways to do this. What I've seen people do with oil paints is they start with their highest value first and then they add in their shadows and they slowly start blending it down. Otherwise you can just use the same technique you would use for acrylics um, where you do a, a kind of layer first and then you layer on top of that. If you do work that way and that's totally fine. I've done it in other videos especially with the cloth in my painting um the cloth for the age of sigma marshall and the um what's it called skaven engineer you can work up in just layering um over wet working on like wet on wet on wet paint a la prima um otherwise it just depends on what technique you'd like to use and both have their advantages so working in this way though allows us to be very gradual with our colors and we can slowly blend it's a bit more if you're coming from acrylics it's a bit more like that kind of working work, way of working um and a lot of the time i'm just like experimenting just to see if i can get the value so i'm working from quite a bright one here and um i actually darking it down because i find it's too bright and uh kind of just run it along the, the palette before bringing it over smoothing out just a tiny bit trying to get the mixture i need and then applying that again onto the model in the areas where it needs to be. So working in this way gives us that that kind of freedom. And you can see that I've gone from just like hash marks to using, I think this is actually like a loaded brush technique. I think that's what it's called. Um, I'm just used to doing it now, but if you use a loaded brush technique, it actually gives you a very strong um, highlight where the brush is first applied and then when we stroke that across the surface of the leg of the the clothing here where we first deploy the paint is really strong and it slowly blends out towards the edges and this is really more noticeable in oil paints because obviously the, the paint is blending as you move the brush across the surface so makes it really effective for using it this way So now I've just been like continuing to apply that paint onto the edge of the armor, the metallic like uh, chest or, or abdomen area here. And um, you can start to see it's already starting to matte out. Like you can see where my brush strokes have been applied onto the model. Um, a few times people have mentioned that they're unable to see um, where their models like paint strokes are because of the glossiness as it begins to dry just turning the model away from the direct light so you're actually seeing it from this side not only does that help you understand what the model looks like from a different angle but also you're getting a chance to see where your brush strokes are and the, the glossiness is affecting it less now when it's wet it does stay glossy for a while but as it starts to dry and it will matte out even more so and that will just give you a bit more freedom and understanding of what your paints actually do it can take some time to get used to but after a while it becomes very clear and it's easy to get get, get a kind of grasp on So this part I start working on the gun and I've chosen to do the, the highlight coming from the side like this just because I felt like it was the most interesting. Um, there's a few ways you can do this. You can actually blend the model, the, the highlight rather, from the bottom towards the top like you might see in some tanks. It's kind of like modular. 
the modular way you make the panels like uh, kind of like contrasting by having light at the bottom and dark at the top before hitting a light surface again when the angle changes uh, it's totally up to you depending on your preference you can see how in this way I'm like not applying the the paint on a side and then find the like I'm not applying the highlight then applying the shadow I'm actually blending at the same time as I apply the paint and you can see the effect it's having where the paint is actually becoming softer as it, I move around the model and this just gives me a freedom um, one of the advice I can give you is try to get comfortable with actually just using one brush here only use the blending brush if you have to just make sure you've got a sharp tip and you'll see the difference it makes in your strokes um, your strokes become a lot more neat they become a lot more intentional and um, it also means you don't need to use as much paint because your your brush is already loaded already and you're getting the most out of it it just kind of means you don't have to keep returning to the palette unless you're trying to get a slightly darker color but here you can see how the effect is kind of just blending into the rest of the brush so again i was at this point i was actually really impressed with the the look of the the colors that had come out of the mixture the abtalongs were doing really well um, I didn't find myself getting frustrated or feeling like okay I can't actually layer but I think the biggest part was actually the titanium white titanium or right, I guess in this white case it's called um, snow white it's very powerful I think the new mixture the new blend the new name the branding of the name is titanium again and um, just adding in again like you can see here adding in those highlights uh, the transition the head the way I brushed the model up you can see like after a few highlights of where the model ends up and uh, just to transition on the blade and then as I'm working my way around the model how far it's able to go so the opacity that the snow white actually adds into the paint makes it very very powerful um, and again transparent paint especially blues and reds they don't have great coverage even if they're like like opaque or semi-opaque the coverage isn't great so adding a little bit of white in there which is very opaque uh, allows you to kind of get the longevity and the opacity that you're looking in your paint as you start to blend up so you can start to see the effect here keeping my brush strokes in a very a circular motion and it's all just about understanding the volumes that you're working with um, breaking whether this is a space marine or a tyranid or um, some kind of like beast creature breaking the model into shapes breaking it down into shapes and then just working your way around the shapes will help give you the results you're after so a lot about oil paints is just making sure that you spend time to go over the areas of the model a couple of times let it settle come back to it and refine it um, oil paints are very versatile if you guys have been keeping up with me on Instagram then you would have seen that I recently attended um, the National Gallery in the UK London National Portrait Gallery and um, you would probably have seen the differences in styles there now oil paints are super versatile because rather than just being for blending we can also use them for hard lines that does depend on the size of the brush you're using and the specific technique you're trying to get out but but one should never really feel limited to only using oil paints for transitions um, you can actually use them for well as you can see for painting entire models from scratch and you can also get <coughs> And you can also get a large variety of different um, finishes. You can get some things that are really soft, really smooth, or you can get hard lines like this. It just becomes from comes from an understanding of the blends you're you're trying to achieve. Um, and I do think now that AK have actually completed the range here of their colours. Um, there's a few paints that I'm still after, like Vermilion, which is a very hot red. I think it's a cadmium red light, I believe. That's the kind of colour that it kind of comes out of that. Um, they've also got a cadmium red, which is cool, uh, which would um, some another colour that I'd like to pick up, which basically just helps complete the range and helps you get the more of the colours that are needed. 
Um, I think now it's safe to say uh, that AK are probably producing the better of the um, oil paint ranges out there for miniatures at least. Um, I only really know of two other miniature lines. Um, prior to this, scale colours were my favourite, but now I've actually got a proper understanding and more colours to choose from, I really find the outer lungs to be really nice. Um, at least for the way I've been using them, just get a better understanding of what actually comes out of the opacity and what you actually expect from the paint. So yeah, really good decision to rebrand and just get the opacity markers out there. Um, of course, they're not artist grade paints, but again, like I said, if you don't have artist grade paints available to you, then these are definitely a really good alternative. And um, at least this is the first layer. So this is, I've been sat here for about 45 minutes at this point. Um, where I've just been blending up and working my way around the model. Now, of course, that's 45 minutes of actually sitting and painting. There were a few moments where I kind of had to stop and look at different things um, at this point, like just to try and uh, come back and just see how I felt about the model before just making some changes. But again, like really effective, really nice and easy to work with and just very clear and just comes with like great, un easy understanding. So at this point, I'm just trying to get in the rebound lights from the bottom panels. Um, it's actually really important to highlight your shadows uh, rather than just the highlighted areas. A lot of the time um, when people are painting, this is something I actually picked up from the Fen model show. Um, and if you haven't watched that video, be sure to check it out on my channel. Um, I'll link it in the top of the corner uh, as we go. But one of the things I picked up was the importance of highlighting areas in the dark. A lot of the time we just leave our shadows unpainted. Uh, we paint them once with our darkest colour and then we stop there. It's actually really important to go into those areas and start adding texture. And it just helps the model feel real and um, three dimensional. And finish actually helps it to look and appear finished. So you can see here, now I'm going into some of the metallic areas, trying to just very simple NNM using the mixtures that I've got in my palette, which are basically the neutral gray, the white and the black, um, with a little bit of the blue and green in there for the reflective colors, just to get a sense that this, uh, the areas are uh, metallic. And you can see the slight stipples I've been adding into the ears and shade. Now, as it's still quite glossy and drying, you can see how some of those areas kind of look like a bit of um like they're kind of like a kind of speckled look but um as the armor mats out that will start to transition into this really nice um scratched brushed um, metallic effect and um, you can see already as i'm moving the model around that effect that it's having so at this stage i'm just providing the model with hard marks um, if you want to learn how to do hard marks be sure to check out the tutorial on the crimson fist where we talk about hard lines and how easy that is to create. Um, here though, I'm just marking out these areas using the tip of my brush um, to just go around the edges and create those highlights and just help the surface of the, the helmet seem a bit more metallic um, and a bit uh, shinier and uh, scratched. This is just an alternative to like um, producing weathering. You can do these effects really early on as you're brushing onto the model just like scratches just really helps with the effect and give it that um i guess that uh grim dark effect that grim dark dirty grimly look like the armor's actually been in use so now i start working on the gun again um you can see how already i've done a little bit of brush marks and i'm just going into the edges into some of the metallic areas where i'm just accentuating the highlights and i'm going to start marking the surface of the gun just trying to create those like hashes um, any areas where I do the brush stroke too strong or too broad I can go back in with my dry brush and just blend those out just to soften that and bring it back together make it a bit more holistic um, so it doesn't look like there's just like really wide areas of highlight um, it's actually really nice and effective way because of course all of this is still wet so we can go back in and just soften those if you haven't already, I 
recommend using uh, magnifying glasses you can get these dentist loops which will just help you get in now these models were really small um a lot smaller than space marines and even some of the tyranids like uh it was actually very difficult so particularly when i had to get into the eyes um which i started to mark out with the magenta color now i'd actually recommend doing this um the eyes in um acrylics first just to give you it's just such a small area i would i would say it's probably not worth using oil paints here just because they take a bit longer to dry um i would actually go in with an acrylic first and then do an loaded brush oil technique on top um and that will give you the same effect it just means that that first initial layer doesn't need to um take time drying here i make a really dark uh, a cold dark brown color uh, mixture just using the purple yellow a little bit of black and um, a tiny bit of white to kind of make this like dark brown um, I then make a add more white into that mixture to just increase the color of the brown but this just created um, a dark kind of textured brown for the holster and I just apply that over the model very simple um, you can be very loose with this area again a reason I've kept it dark is because it's not an area of focus but of course it does need to look painted and it does need to stand out from the rest of the armor but we don't want to draw attention away from the face so I've kept it very dark for the purposes of this video So at this point I actually found that the gun was just not really taking enough attention so I just wanted to do some very light stripes. I made um, using the yellow and a little bit of white I mixed that into my brightest highlight colour and I just made a separate colour on the side and I started to just apply that onto the model um, making these kind of like stripe designs and that really just takes some attention away from just uh, the armor breaks it up and just gives your eyes a little bit more of areas to focus now again of course this is more thick so at this point i'm using very little thinner it's thicker than the rest of the colors that i've already placed and this allows us to layer on top without it blending underneath so keeping it hard basically we're just doing our best to make the the line or the the stripe a bit thicker but we're also focusing on not blending i could have applied this onto the armor to be honest just to break up a little bit more but but i want to keep it just on the gun so people's attention was drawn there only for a little while without being distracting to the rest of the model so it's just a balance here um, just making sure that as you're applying on you're not distracting the viewer so now i'm just going to start working on the metallics particularly the metallics of the stomach area and the abdomen and you can see that i'm just applying that onto my brush you can see i've noticed as well that the tip of the brush was starting to split so i just added a little bit of thinner and now i'm just practicing on my thumb i've really like large thumbnails so it makes it helpful for just seeing the effects i'm gonna get and uh, before you apply your paint onto the model do just practice testing it on your fingernail um, just to see the effect you're going to get before applying onto a model and being shocked. Um, here I'm just applying the highlights in a straight line. I'm making sure that they're very bright and this is actually really helpful for making the material seem metallic and very shiny. And you can see now the rest of the armor, how it's starting to kind of come together, even though um, it's starting to dry. The leg is still very shiny and I'll mat that out, but the armor is in a really nice place. Um, even though we're not using any metallic paint whatsoever, everything here is in n and We're still getting that effect. For the middle part, now just to make it darker, I added my shadow color, which was the dark blue 
um, and a tiny bit of grey and uh, black to lower the value and um, I thinned that around about one point paint or one point thinner and this allows me to just as really tiny strokes without bleeding into the rest of the model because oils can do that um, just keeping it still seemingly thick but thinner than the other the other um, parts of the paint that I've been using in other areas just to give me that freedom to apply it where I need and this is what kind of gives us that metallic feel and you can see as like as the model begins to mat out how easy it is to start to see where parts of the armor is coming together so especially on the helmet there and the chest it's like some of my favorite parts now of the model and uh, it's actually really nice to see it blending in together So this last part I basically start to add in a bit more contrast, um, I thin my paints right down on the second layer, I've left it now for about two hours to dry, I went out for a bit, came back and um, I started to work on it a little bit um, on certain areas and just starting to try to add in these highlights um, to accentuate certain areas where I am trying to be, draw a little bit of attention. Um, and to make the areas seem a bit more interesting. Uh, you can see now where the metallics are, you can see how we've got all the volumes, the different materials, all the areas that we need to be are painted. The back leg, um, at least his right leg is um, darker and in less light, so it's receiving less light. So there is still a bit of a highlight there, but not as much as the leg that's forward and the knee that's raised. And you can see how the, um, the thigh has already started to mat out a bit. So we're getting that. That, that difference in texture to the armor, um, which is still very shiny. I am trying to bring attention into the, the gun as well. So I'm just working on that, just adding a little bit of brush marks, but not trying to do too much. The desaturated yellow in this case actually does a lot of work. The desaturated yellow works with the magenta eyes and um, just adds a nice part of value um, of the just the stripe. The gun is, I guess, a focal point and we get this really nice triangle movement from where the gun is to the head and to the, the kind of abdomen um, when my uh, brush moves out of the way, there you go. You can see now how we're kind of getting that effect up the model. And again, these are just using a few of the colors in the set. Um, you can see like what we're able to get out of the, the paint by working in this way um, and just the effect it gives us just a lot of freedom there's so many different colors i could have done this in a magenta i could have done this in a, a red or a green or a yellow or desert khaki color just from the colors in, in included in the set but it's just that understanding um plus again I, I say that you would probably so i do say that you do need um a white and a black um it's a shame that that doesn't come in the set um i do believe that comes in other sets that they have there but um just picking up the primary color set a white and a black um, and um, any of the greys is helpful uh, just for building all of the colours you need um, and I would say a brown I would say that they could probably do without the, the purple or the orange or the green <laughs> um, the, grass, the, the, the grass green is useful, the orange is useful, the purple not so much I think they could have just swapped that out for a brown and kept the purple in a, another pack, but I guess it is the primary and secondary color set, so it makes sense that it's in there. But um, I would definitely pick up a gray, black, white, and a brown, um, just to give you the full color range, so you can make any color you need. So speaking of uh, using the purple, um, I actually do end up using it here to make a really nice brown. So I take some of the yellow, the magenta, and the purple, uh, just and a tiny bit of black just to make the a nice brown of course if you had the brown in the set you could just use that um, but you don't so yeah just using this mixture allows us to create this really rich brown 
um, and it's very similar to what I had been doing for the base but adding in that tiny bit more magenta a tiny bit more yellow gives us a more um, a warmer color and I'm actually going to use this now on the base so by having a cold armor and a warm base it pushes the model forward and um, pushes the blue forward and lets that stick out on the bit on the model so I start using that all over the base just applying it in a very thin layer first using like the, the darker part of the mixture and in a prime glaze and then I go on top of that and start just basically going to town on the base um, just marking it out being really fun very loose um, using like not as refined as I was on the armor because there's no need to be but I just start marking it out and uh, using that just to bring it together So oil paints are actually very technical, like you can see how much we can get away with like being very loose with our brush strokes, especially at this scale, not everything needs to be blended, it's okay to leave areas of like just harder transitions, not everything needs to be blended to the point of it being soft and actually if everything is blended, you can pretty much destroy the work that you've been doing um, and that's actually come from a friend of mine who's um, very good oil painter he's been talking to me we've been talking through these things and um, the way he describes it is if like we always blend we remove the work we're doing so it's actually nice to leave some of that those brush strokes in just to show again and remind people that this is a painted miniature not a 3d model that we're rendering um, like it's a <laughs> in a video game Now a key thing to do is, you probably notice here that it's very wet, I've basically applied a thin layer of um, white spirit. If you are going to paint your bases in um, oils and then add in a weathering powder like I've done here, then don't use water because when oils um, are applied they, f they form a very film, uh, thin layer of film over the surface and that actually rejects any acrylic paint being applied on top of it. The reverse doesn't happen, you can apply on top of acrylics but you can't apply oils, um, acrylics on top of oils. So doing this way just make sure that you're able to paint on top of the surface. Now once you're done with that and you've, you're happy with the base, I then start applying a very thin layer of AK Black and that's just to finish the border of the base, the trim of the base off and it just allows us to finish the model off and make it more presentable. And at that point, the miniature is finished. And um, overall, really, really happy with the, the, the end result of this model. Um, this took me about two, again, two hours, two and a half hours, I'd say, actually in between, just like waiting for things to dry and the base included. So like really easy and nice to work with. I would definitely recommend picking up these oil paints if you um, don't have any artist grade available um, or anywhere near you. Um, and even if you do, just for some of the other like more expensive colors, I would definitely say that this is a good alternative just to pick up and use at your disposal. So again, thank you AK Interactive and to thank you for all of you who have made it this far. Thanks for the support you've been giving me. Um, it's really good to be creating tutorials around oil painting and just seeing the results we're getting. Really looking forward to share um, the next few videos with you guys over what I've discovered and I hope you're all doing well. So thanks again for tuning in. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, there should be a link in the bio to my Patreon. Thank you to all my loyal patrons, you make this possible. Bye for now.